Hey everyone, it is the opening edition of the Josh and Joe Browns recap. This is the first time we've done this, so we're hoping it's good. Um, we hope to do this on a more positive note the rest of the season, but I guess we'll see on that. But following that embarrassing loss today, 38-6 in the opening uh, game of the season at Baltimore, we're here to discuss sort of the statistics and just go through some of the plays that happened or didn't happen or we wish would have happened. Um, but yeah, so I'm Josh. I'm This is the first time I've ever done this, so I'm hoping it's well. Mm -hmm. And I, this is one of the first times I think Joe's drawn live too. So yeah, there's Joe yeah. Gilbert for you. Hey, <laughs> well, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I wish it was on better terms today, but here we are talking about a, another season opener loss. Yeah, so today was the like 16th straight season opening loss. They yeah. haven't won since 2004. That's the only time they've won. I do remember that so, game, but <laughs> it's like a tradition. I mean, yeah. at least they're consistent, right? It's one of the only consist consistencies they have is losing week one. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right. So, first, we'll start off with we'll just go kind of play by play. I guess, or not play by play, but kind of like from start to finish of the game. Um, mm -hmm. The game started with Nick Chubb 11 yard run which obviously was pretty good. But then it turned into Baker getting two straight tip balls by Calais Campbell. The second one was intercepted. Um, and it seemed like after that point, it only went downhill for the Browns. How, what do you think about that, Joe? Yeah, the, uh, the, flow, the flow was pretty good in the first, what, five plays or so. Um, quick passing, uh, good uh, zone running for the first couple uh, – snaps there and then yeah those tip passes just kind of like got the offense into a funk and they seemingly never got out of it uh they got out of it for stretches but yeah it wasn't it wasn't very good um that clayus campbell is just uh, another huge addition to baltimore already good defense so it seems <laughs> it like made baltimore even worse. keeps making yeah it seems like baltimore keeps making all the right moves and draft picks and yeah. it just it makes them just so much better than what the Browns are current are currently, and we experienced that today with Calais Campbell and J.K. Dobbins and those types of guys. I mean, Calais Campbell was an off-season addition, and he dominated today for them. And then yeah. J.K. Dobbins had two touchdowns at the draft pick for him, and they already have Mark Ingram and Lamar Jackson as their dual threat, technically running back quarterback. But now they add J.K. Dobbins to that three-headed monster, and yeah. I mean, there's only so much, so many weapons you can have, and it seems like they just keep adding weapons while the Browns defense. Right. I mean, the Browns defense looked bad today. I guess the injuries kind of pile up on that yeah. too. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't even know what to say about the defense. Mark Andrews yeah. dominate. When was the last time the Browns knew how to guard a tight end or cover a right. tight end? That's my question. <laughs> oh man, it's been. <laughs> it's been years. Let's see. Decades. Mark Andrews had five catches, 58 yards, two touchdowns on six targets. And I yeah. think both the touchdowns are basically wide open. I mean, I could have gone yeah. out there and caught him, to be honest. Yeah. I'm not it was, that athletic anymore. Yeah, yeah the, the first one was wide open, but it was a off-target pass, but it made it look easy um, with a yeah. one-handed catch. But, yeah, the, uh, the defense – I wasn't expecting – Given all the injuries in the second uh, secondary and the linebackers, um, I, I didn't expect them to be great. But man, it was <laughs> some of it was just for the good stretch in the second and third quarters. They were just running wide open with yeah, like exactly. no no resistance. <laughs> I mean, I know Miles Garrett and Larry Ogunjobi and those front guys are good. But when you don't have linebackers and Denzel Ward is technically your only good defensive back, I mean, even a team like Baltimore, which is run first, they're just going to find wide open guys like they did all all the last three quarters of the game today. Yeah, yeah. The uh, what if the Browns didn't get any pressure? It was pretty much they had no chance. They <laughs> it was I I think I Lamar had like maybe three or four seconds and he would find somebody wide open. It was. Yeah. If the it pressure didn't do anything, it was it was bad news for the Browns. Yeah. Um, 
All right, so let's um, – by the way, Lamar Jackson, 20 of 25, 275 yards, three touchdowns, and, I mean, he's not considered a throwing quarterback. No. You cannot let a guy like Lamar Jackson complete 80% no. of his passes. Yeah, the thing the thing is with with him, like for much of the much of the first half, like the passes they weren't hard. <laughs> like guys were just wide open. It was quick passing. It 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 was what I hope the Browns be sometime. Yeah, in the near future with uh, <laughs> Stefanski. <laughs> for the last two decades, so, we hope yeah, that. Yeah, they made it just so easy for him to just be successful with his passing and. He he knew where to throw it at on the right time, and he he did really well. Yeah, I mean we'll get to it in, in a little bit later, but that ninety-nine yard touchdown drive would yeah, seem like was, a dagger, and that was so early on. But I mean, yeah. he, they were, Baltimore's offense was able to do anything, and it was right. ninety-nine yards. Yeah. Ten ten plays, ninety-nine yards, and they made it look easy. That that was pretty much the end of the game there. That was. Yeah. That that whole but, sequence we'll talk about yeah, later, but yeah. But yeah, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, all right. So let's go to another bad point of the game. Uh, Which one is seven nothing? <laughs> true, true. Seven nothing. The Browns have the ball on their own thirty-one yard line, fourth down, and they do a fake punt. Oh my god! I don't know if that was scripted. Like if it was a certain look. Like if they said it, hey, if we get this look during the game, we're gonna do it. Yeah. Or if that was like uh, on like. Instant. I don't know. I don't know who called it. I know Stefanski yeah. went for it, but I mean, every head coach is going to do that. Yeah. But what in the heck are you doing? It sure looked like they they saw they got a look that they saw in practice that they would do this fake punt. But man, that's awful field position to just do it there. And yeah. They they actually have the opportunity if they if they actually block the guy, <laughs> the uh, the former Brown, I would say, L.J. Fort. Um, but they just blew the block and it was over from there. Uh, yeah, Four Brown was... making a play against the Browns. <laughs> Love <laughs> to see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next one, we have, I don't even want to talk about that fake play anymore because that was just a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. Um, the only good thing that came of that was the Browns' defense looked good on that following drive and mm-hmm. held ju- uh, Baltimore to a field goal, so 10 nothing. Yeah. And then the next – couple drives it was chubb and kareem hunt um looking like a two-headed monster which is yep. what we were hoping for and right yeah the potential of them two is really good the problem is that when you are down all game there's only so much that two running backs can do out of the backfield and we've yet again experienced that just like we did last season yeah. um so yeah so nick chubb and kareem hunt get the team down in the um, red zone, and then David and Joku with the first touchdown catch of the game, which is if you, I would have put money down on anyone being the first <laughs> touchdown reception, it would not have been David and Joku. <laughs> he did really well, though, surprisingly. He was the best. Yeah, player. He was, him and Jarvis were by far the best uh, far, receivers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, OBJ yeah, that was great. Austin Hooper. You, you go. Yeah, that Your was turn. a great, uh, great, um, play on the in the goal line I, last year was like a just terrible uh execution on the goal line so that was a nice nice play call there and uh to get a wide open uh in joku but yeah that was about the highlight of the game there <laughs> yeah the highlight of the game and it was what it made it 10 no oh, and then another ten to touch. no yeah 10-6 because austin cyber just like he did last year came down and oh. missed an extra point to start the season I, um he, I, I just want to get it in. He was just terrible. I've I've never seen a kicker just. He wasn't even close on the PAT hit the bar, and then the next one was just wasn't even close. Like, yeah, I don't know if he's <laughs> in his own head or if he's just that bad. I don't know. I think but it's I the think... Friday, the Friday fumble uh, curse, maybe. <laughs> I think it might be the end of uh, Cyber, though. Unfortunately. I mean, they have a freaking kicker on the practice squad. How many kickers are on the practice squad across the league? I bet right, very, uh, very minimal. Very minimal, yeah. And the kickoffs weren't even good either. He wouldn't even get any uh, any kick uh, like out of the end zone or anything. It was going to like the goal line. Like it was, yeah. He was yeah, just you're, not great. If you're a kicker and you're not good at kicking, chances are you're not going to be good in the NFL. I think that's, that's what the Browns have learned there. That is true. Unfortunately. <laughs> 
and the Browns spent a fifth round pick for on him, but we won't talk about that. Yeah, okay. Stop picking kickers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Larry Ogan Joby forced that fumble and Miles Gary covered it. That was a good play of the game too defensively. And then oh, so that did that ten play ninety nine yard penalty or ninety nine yard touchdown drive by Baltimore, was that following the fourth and forty one? No, the yeah. ninety nine, the ninety nine yarder was the. Um, let us see. I think it uh, was the fourth, fourth and forty one. It was third and forty one, and fourth and forty one. Which credit to Stefanski. Last year, Freddie Kitchens would have called a timeout to not have to delay a game to make it fourth and thirty six instead of fourth and forty one. But how often do you see a fourth and forty one play? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That, that would drive was really good too. They were like moving down the field, and then it started with the uh, OBJ uh, face mask on offense, which you only see on the Browns an offensive yep. face mask. Um, and then it just got worse and worse from there. It was one of OBJ's only good moments of the game, and he ruined it by a face mask too. <laughs> yeah, he had a rough game. <laughs> it's. I don't. Every time I don't you know think the Browns the, have a really good player. Yeah, I don't know what they they were talking about the IV, and then they never went back to it. Like he got an IV during the halftime. Like, did he get was sick or? Yeah, that was kind of a weird situation. They didn't really talk about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. Um. Yeah. So I mean, by that point in the game. That 99-yard touchdown um, drive seemed like it was it was made it 17-6. It seemed like the Browns could never really recover after that. And yeah. to make it even worse on that, I think on the next drive or the couple drives after that was the OBJ dropped catch, easy catch on third and two. And then Cyber comes down, misses the uh, field goal, and then Baltimore goes down and scores another touchdown. That, you know, that was the game, game over. there. Yeah, yeah, that was the game there. It was, it was what, a 14-point swing there? Possibly, yeah. the Browns would have had to go inside the red zone and instead missed an extra point, gave it back to Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> if you're going to be a star wide receiver in the league, you have to make catches like that. Oh yeah, there's, yeah. To. There's no. We keep making excuses for him, but it's last year was injuries. I'll, I'll give him that, but this year he's he's got no excuse. And he's got to make that catch. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean. Oh, and then at the end of the game, when the game was already over, Dedrick Wills, leg injury, questionable questionable to return. And on the TV broadcast, they said he can barely put any weight, le- uh, barely put yeah. any weight on his leg. And the Browns now play Thursday night. That yeah, that was good. yeah, that was probably the worst part of this game. I didn't expect a win, but these injuries, I think they got they lost Phillips, Jacob Phillips, which is oh, already, him, yeah, yeah, the linebacker core is already. Thin as it is, um, Gedrick uh, Wills is out, and hopefully, hopefully he'll be back soon. Um, and then I think Conklin went out for a second. I'm not sure oh, if he came yeah, back. I, see that. I may yeah. or may not have turned the channel though, and like the, <laughs> the fourth quarter. I don't think anyone blamed you on that. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, this the injuries just they couldn't, they can't afford. <laughs> Especially in the secondary on defense, they just can't afford these Basically, things. Yeah, linebacker and secondary on defense, and then offensive line, and that's literally where the three injuries happened. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess yeah. not three, but they were already without uh, Greedy Williams and Grant Delpit. So. Right. But yeah, I mean, that Will's injury, if he could have put any weight, I didn't see the post game, but if he could have put any weight, uh, weight on his leg, it's probably not yeah. looking good for four days from now. No, four to yeah. Thursday, Thursday's already. If you're dinged up on, if you're dinged up on a Sunday and you have a Thursday game, those injuries usually don't allow you to play the next game. Um, it's, so it's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be another rough one. <laughs> yeah, I told myself going into this game that I can't get too high if the Browns look really good. I don't know why I even thought that in the first place, and I can't get too low if they look bad. Obviously, they looked really bad, but. Yeah. It's Baltimore. We knew it was going to be the toughest game of the season, week one. And and when you add in that they barely had any training camp, didn't have any preseason games to get to learn the offense, nothing like that. I mean, there's only so much I can put into it, but then again, it's the Browns. 
I mean, they look bad today. Yeah, yeah. I I had the same way. I was not expecting a win. I ex- I hoped for a close game that they showed signs, which I saw a couple signs on offense. But, um, yeah, the thing I just wanted to do is just get healthy, stay healthy at least, which we didn't do. And just so signs of that there is improvement um, because that, that this offseason has just been – everything could go wrong for the Browns did uh, in terms of a shortened, se- shortened preseason – no mini camps, pretty much no on field mini camps, um, and then injuries throughout training camp and no preseason games. It was just it, it was an uphill battle to to play Baltimore week one, which is probably the the worst matchup they could have had this uh, in game one, given what Baltimore is a veteran team with pretty much everybody back from their offense and defense, and it was just it wasn't a great. Everything, every circumstance that was there for the Browns just went against them, and it was everything downhill from there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm glad that they got the worst game out of the way week one of the season, but it's also yeah. bad because now they looked really bad. Yeah. And now I had to work their way up. I, I think yeah. I'd rather have an easy start to the season. That way you gain some confidence, right? gel yeah. together, stuff like that, and then have the harder games at the end. But, I mean – yeah. Nothing ever goes the Browns' way. So no. why would I expect yeah. that? Um, <laughs> Her- Herbert Taylor said, 7-9 and nine team, not a dumpster fire, just a garbage can fire. I kind of like that. <laughs> just a garbage can fire right now, not a dumpster fire. It's a small fire that could build That's into a, It could build into a dumpster fire, but right now it's just a garbage it's fire. Just, yeah, it's just a garbage fire. <laughs> um, but yeah, Thursday night. I'm definitely going to – I mean, I don't have good feelings for this team right now, um, but Thursday night's a, definitely a true test. I mean, Bengals at home, obviously home field advantage doesn't matter much this season. Um, but, yeah, it's the Bengals, very winnable game. The only problem is that it's a short week, but it's also a short week for the Bengals. They're, they're actually playing right now. So yeah, it's so even yeah. a couple hours of a shorter yeah. week for them. Yeah, so I, I don't know what to expect. I, this game – didn't really show you anything what you can take forward, really. Uh, the defense was just hampered with the injuries in the secondary and, and the offense just there. Nothing was clicking yet, um, which is understandable after the off season. But um, yeah, I don't know what to expect come Thursday. But it's it's a win. It's a game that you need to win if you're gonna. Yes. If you're gonna uh, battle for the playoffs, um, the seventh, I, I I don't think they're gonna get into the win the division. Um, so, but there's a <laughs> there's a three three wild cards this year, so it's another extra opportunity for them. Um, but it's got to start Thursday if they want to uh, win, get into the playoffs in here. For sure. I mean. Yeah, playoffs are a hard thing to look at right now when they just lost 38-6, but I guess right. with the three wild card spots, it's certainly possible. Especially, right. I mean, who knows? Maybe things will work out, but I guess we'll see. Um, yeah. But yeah, with the Thursday night, if Joe and I are planning on doing this after every game, or in the days following every game. Um, mm-hmm. But with the Thursday night game, I'm not sure how it's going to work, because obviously Thursday night, it's a work night, and they the game won't be over until probably 11.30 midnight-ish um, mm-hmm. Eastern time. But we will try to do it either Friday or Saturday. Um, yep. Hopefully, we will be discussing a win. Hopefully, yes. we'll be discussing how OBJ had an awesome one-handed catch in the end zone, and Nick <laughs> Chubb and Kareem Hunt looked really good. Um, if, if, you want, yeah. if, you, if you want positive news, last year was – I think it was a Thursday night. Was, was it the Giants? Didn't they play oh, the Giants yeah. on Thursday? That's when Baker came in. Uh, yeah, and that was uh, – OBJ's best game was that long touchdown versus the Giants. Um, so – Glass half full if you want to <laughs> stick something on Thursday. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, so Joe Burrow and the fighting Bengals. It's it, yeah. it's if the Brown, It's not a must win, but the Browns want to be a contender, playoff contender. It's basically a must win. You can't sit out right. 0-2 and have one of your losses be against the Bengals. Yeah, it's, it's – yeah, <laughs> I agree. So, yeah, thank you guys for joining us. I know it was short, but hopefully after a win we'll have a lot more – positive news to talk about and talk a lot longer um but yeah so we'll see you guys either 
Friday or Saturday or Sunday of next weekend. Hopefully talking about a Brownsman. Yeah, Thank you. Guys. Keep the faith, everybody. <laughs>